you know Such a pretty smile I want to see it once in a while But you were alive for me You were alive for me <laughs> Yeah, that's it, yeah yeah. It's got to be the truth. As, as life goes on, my bladder just shrinks and shrinks yeah. into the size of a thimble. That's right. Yep. In my case, a peanut. You have to pee while you're peeing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Like, Man, I really got to pee. Wait a minute, I'm peeing. <laughs> I can hardly hold this. Stop peeing so I can start peeing. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for one dinner, you probably get up and pee like five or six times. That's possible. It depends. You know, if I, if I drink like a lot of coffee, that happens. Which is obviously every day. Uh, you know what? Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't. I don't think I drink a lot of coffee every day, but some oh. days I do. Yeah, yeah. Some days. I, I think do. you're like a six to seven cup a guy a day. <laughs> a six or seven cup a day guy? No. So what are you then, if you had to be on average? An average? Yeah. Um. um don't count. Just throw. Okay. It so so is a large coffee co count as one? Yep. Okay. So three or four. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you laugh like that's you don't believe me or something. I don't know. Well, I know it's kind of like there's this joke, this ongoing joke. Like if you, like were to if you were to have like some information on the internet about yourself and it said like you're you're six foot, right? And then, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like you can just like sl slightly fabricated, but not not quantified as a lie, but just slightly off. Right. Right. Well, maybe that's on skates, right? Right. Or, yeah, <laughs> with your big, with, when you wear your high heels. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Brought to you by Bada Shoes. Bada Shoes. Bada Shoes. We got your high heels right now. Moment of silence, followed by the serenity prayer. God. God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, sure. courage to change the things we can, the wisdom to know the difference. All right. Welcome to Real Raw Recovery. I'm Joe Tilly on the lake in Newcastle, looking I'm at the water, sorry. mesmerized. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, you, you're mesmerized by the water? Yeah, yeah. It's nice. By your view? Yeah. I heard that. I heard a, a rich guy saying, like, one of the most valuable things that you can, that money can buy is a view. Really, eh? Yeah, like, when you have, like, all the money in the world and then some. Right. There's that one thing that, uh, that people don't, you know, talk about. Like, you know, after you have, you know, your... 10th Lamborghini or something. He says there is one yeah. thing that money can buy that's valuable. And yeah. that is a view. Yeah. He says like, out of all the things that money can buy, like a view is kind of like paramount. And I thought, mm, interesting take. It is pretty nice. That's for sure. You know, it, it's, uh, it's very calming and uh, I love it. It's beautiful. So I believe it's my turn to read the reading from daily reflections all right all right freedom from king alcohol let us not suppose even for an instant that we are not under constraint our former tyrant king alcohol always stands ready again to clutch us to him therefore freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved else we go mad or die that's from As Bill Sees It, page 134. When drinking, I lived in spiritual, emotional, and sometimes physical confinement. 
I had constructed my prison with bars of self-will and self-indulgence from which I could not escape. Occasional dry spells that seemed to promise freedom would turn out to be little more than hopes of a reprieve. True escape required a willingness to follow whatever right actions were needed to turn the lock. With that willingness and action, both the lock and the bars themselves opened for me. Continued willingness and action keep me free in a kind of extended daily probation that need never end. Are you there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, what do you think of that? By all means, feel free to jump in. You always got a lot to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know what? I. I I don't recall the uh, even occasional dry spells. I, I guess okay. I, I should say that there was time, for, time, times when I wouldn't when I go through periods when I wouldn't drink. Yes. Okay. So uh, yeah, that was early, early on. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, because I wasn't willing to follow any right actions you know, in retrospect, right actions. I mean, you know, I always believed that if I tried hard enough, I could just basically think myself out of addiction. I could will myself out of addiction <clears throat> that I could just, you know, suck it up, pull up my socks and my, you know, and just, uh, get it done. And so, uh, but I kept, I kept trying to do that and nothing happened. So, uh, uh, so that, that the willpower was, was not working. Uh, it was, it, it led to frustration and anger and, you know, all that stuff. But, um, there was no, uh, uh, the just the, the needed willpower wasn't there, but I just I just I kept thinking that no, I'm just not trying hard enough. I'm just not trying hard enough. Tomorrow I'm going to try harder, and so I I would try harder, and uh, and that's what I did. So uh, yeah, so those who are you know, I can see how the the tyrant king alcohol was was always there. You know, it, it, for me, it worked a lot better in retrospect because when I was in it at the time, I just couldn't see it. I just kept believing that somehow I was going to be able to muster the willpower to do this, but I just never could. And so I had to uh, eventually, I have had to eventually surrender in order to uh, to get it going. Are you a di different person than you than you were when you were drinking? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. How much? What percent would you say? Like, if you had to give a give like a on a scale or percentage, how much of you is different than if you were in your twenties, thirties? Well, I mean, I, I want to say a hundred percent because uh, you know. Uh, you know, I talked about that self-will and willpower and all that other stuff. And that's what I really thought life was all about is, is about exerting my will and, uh, exerting my will over any like addiction issues, exerting my will over any, uh, 
you know, work issues, exerting my will over any, any issues that had to be anything that had to be solved. I was just going to bear down and solve it. And, um, I guess maybe, so maybe, you know, there, there is a certain amount of me, uh, a certain percentage, I guess, of, of my willpower that still exists that way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there is, but I do, uh, you know, when I'm at, when I'm in a, in a good state of mind, like when I'm in a, in a, a, a good spiritual place, I really, I really understand that, uh, I don't have any control and I need to turn, turn my life well over to a power to have any, to have any, uh, freedom and peace. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So you're a hundred percent different person than you were. Nothing. Well, it, it, it's such a big change that that's why I wanted to say a hundred percent. But in reality, uh, no, because the old me still exists, right? The old me still creeps up, especially um, when I'm uh, when things don't go my way, uh, and I'm not in a good spiritual frame of mind. Then I, I still try to self solve things with my own will, and I still try to control a little bit and stuff like that. So I, I guess probably that what part of me is the same, what part of me is different, maybe half and half, maybe. And all of the old you is all bad. No, I can't say that. No, uh, no, because I did have some. I did have some. I, I I did have some, you know, decent moral teaching, and I did have some. Uh, I did have some decent moral leanings in 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 some aspects, but some aspects I just I just uh, ignored all that and uh, and you know just did shit. And none of those none of that carries over today that's valuable it's all out the window uh, down a eh? i guess no no i guess maybe my my willingness to try try certain things try new things try certain things and to apply myself in in a in a in a in a um, in a serious way, like, uh, in, in like to really apply myself, like for example, when it came to boxing or when it came to, uh, you know, going back to school or when it came to, uh, pursuing a career and all those things, you know, I was pretty adamant and pretty dedicated and, um, committed. So all, I, I guess all that stuff is, is, uh, it was beneficial for me when I, when I, uh, when I turned to the program, because I think I, you know, I, 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 I was told and I read that I needed to, you know, I needed to, you know, use the same fervor to, uh, find recovery that I did to, uh, to get drunk and, uh, and to do other things. Right the same fervor that I, 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 the same, you know, intensity and everything else that I, that I, that I used in other aspects of my life. I needed to, um, I needed to do that when it came to, uh, recovery, I needed to commit myself and, 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 um, to follow the path, the path. And I, and I really, I was afraid and, and I wanted to do that. So I did. So maybe that, that part of it was helpful. Because I, I can see people who come in and, and they just do things half-assed. And if you do recovery half-assed, it's like anything else, right? <laughs> you, you know, half measures, as it says, avail, avail us nothing. So. So I guess that, that, that those are traits that were helpful out of recovery and in recovery. But, you know, that mental state that I used to have, like, I was so afraid because I thought I had to control everything, right? I thought I, thought I had to control everything and I had to uh, um, make things happen. And there's a lot of pressure. And sometimes I felt like I couldn't make things happen and I felt so frustrated and, and uh, 
and weak and everything else and and and, me, and a fearful and all that stuff and you know it's just overwhelming the fear and, and, and frustration was overwhelming and you know that that fear and frustration i don't i don't worry about that so much anymore i mean there's it, it's there in a limited basis but eventually i can i can turn myself back into back towards the power and, and not be so frustrated and and fearful and um do you, trust, do you attribute and trust that growth to just being more mature uh yeah sure maturity is probably part of it maturity is part of it because i was really immature when you know when uh drinking i, I was really immature right i and i and i couldn't help but be immature and i just you know just lying about everything and you know and uh you know, there was you no lying well i was lying about what i was doing where right. i was going but i just lying to myself too right right lying to myself that deceiving myself into believing that what i was doing was okay and it wasn't you know So that's, um, it, it was really hard because I also wanted to create my, my, uh, an image of myself that I wanted people to believe that I was. Mm -hmm. And I worked hard to create this image, but at the same time I was, I was, you know, tearing this image down with my, about my behavior. And I was, you know, full of shit. That was because that's not who I really was. But I wanted everybody to believe I was, so I lived to try to live this phony life, and that was really frustrating and hard. So that part of it is is uh, you know I'm I'm so glad that I don't have to be part of that anymore. I just you know what, just being me is enough, and and that's and learning that through, you know through the process of recovery and steps and everything else, and learning about who I am, and being honest about that. And being okay with that, you know, that's so, such a freeing process. So if you had to describe yourself like in the Coles notes or even a shorter version, not to put you on the spot too much, but like question, who are you then? Who are you dad? Well, I, I think who I am is more legit. You know, the, you know what I'm saying is, is who I am is what, what you see. And I don't, I, I guess who I am is, is uh, I think for the most part, pretty honest, uh, open uh caring loving uh um uh, maybe intense at times but you know it's just part of that part of that part of some of the, you know i have uh, lots of character defects that I, I continue to work on and continue to uh struggle with and suffer from but you know way way less than i used to and whereas before the whole freaking thing was just a phony facade and that I, I like living in an image that I tried to, uh, to create for myself that I, that I wanted others to believe that I was because I didn't like who I was and I didn't, I believe nobody else would like who I was either. You know, it all came down to that fear of abandonment that everybody's going to leave me and I'm going to die. Really? If they, yeah, if they kind of, if they know who I really am. That's kind of the core of it. For you? I didn't think, yeah, for me, it was the core of it because I didn't believe that people <clears throat> would, uh, there was enough value in me for people to really, to really care about, to really stay with me. So if, 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 uh, if people really knew what I was really like, then they, then they were going to leave. <clears throat> Where were they going to go? That, uh, <laughs> oh, somewhere else. <laughs> Everybody's going to leave and I was going to be alone. I would die. And I think it's a, it's a feeling and a, and a belief that I had since I was young. And uh, because I had it since for such a long time that I, I, I really believed it. So that, that, and when you're, when you're five years old and six years old or whatever, and everybody does leave you, then you're probably going to die. Uh -huh. But, but if you're 35 and, uh, and everybody leaves you, you know what? That's okay. You still got you. What I, what I learned was I, I will always have me to support myself. I will always have the power to support me. 
So I'm never alone and I'm always going to be okay. So, you know, that was such a like, boing, like uh, the, the, the light went on for me with, with that piece. And, and uh, I came to the realization that was, that I, I really was never alone because I was always there to support myself and the power is always there with me. So I don't have to fear being alone. What does that and, power you know, do for you today? What does the power do today? Hmm. Well, it's uh, the power. Is, okay, so it's it, it's the power is what I turn to all the time for guidance, for freedom from fear, for freedom from everything. Walk know, me like through that. For, You're, like, how does that work? How, for example. Okay, so so okay, so I have. Uh, I have turmoil in my mind, like some a situation arises that's confusing me or frustrating me or causing me to be fearful. I can, uh, you know, it doesn't take me long before I'm praying about it. You know, usually it's just a serenity prayer just to help me get grounded. And then coming to the realization that whatever is in front of me, whatever this thing that's frustrating me isn't really important this person that I am having issues with is just being who they are. And that, and there's that, you know, there's a, a page 67 of the big book. There's that, um, the, the sick man's prayer, which I really like, you know, to understand that they like myself are sick too. And I'm sick and I am a sick person. I'm getting well and I've done a, a lot of work to get well, but, but not everybody has done that. And so who am, I, who am I to judge just because that person is not in a place where they're, you know, where they're really easy to get along with doesn't mean that, you know, they're not doing the best they can with what they got because I believe they are. So anyway, it, it helps me to have, to put people in life into perspective and to realize that, you know, it's out of my control. I'm not going to change them and I don't have to. I just have to get along with with uh, with other people to the best of my ability, and when I can't get along with somebody, then I can just leave, right? So I'm going to put it into the next year and say that just sounds like learned behavior and knowledge that cured that, not not any sort of power. Uh, okay, well that's that. You're right. It's learned behavior and knowledge in recovery that I didn't have before that I, before I trusted that power, because if, by trusting the power, I was able to, to look at myself in a, in a, in a objective fashion to do an inventory to start to change, to do, uh, to make amends, to do all those things that allow me to get to a place where I can accept people as they are. But it all starts with, with me, uh, turning to the power because I didn't have the power to do that, to see that. You know, to be objective, to see myself as I really am. And, and I, first of all, the first thing I had to do was, was trust that power to, to do all that work and to, work? to realize that, uh, <laughs> to do the self analysis, to do uh, an inventory, to share the inventory. You did to that. have the, yes, right. I had, but to have the faith to do that, to trust to do that, I had to turn to the power because I didn't have that faith and trust. And well, yeah, you didn't need it. You just well, did I did. It. No, no, I needed I needed to find the willingness because I wasn't willing to do it. Left on my own devices. No, you're desperate, so you're willing to do anything. Right. So I still don't see how the but power the, how the power comes into this. Okay, okay. So the first thing I have to do is when I, I come in here with desperation, is okay, so I have this belief that there's no power, that the, you know, I'm one of those those atheists that believe that that believe that that um, life is nowhere, uh, just vo avoid the cipher, you know, nothingness going to nowhere, to, you know, all, all that stuff. And, and um, it was, um, I was uh, in, of this, of the belief that I had to do everything and make everything happen. And when I turned to the power, now the power just brings me comfort and ease. And now I don't have to do anything. I don't have to make anything happen. So what I turn to the power for is the ease and comfort to know that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be 
and I don't have to do anything. And I just have to trust the power and just go with it. And for me, that was freedom. But there, see, that's, that's it's a it's a process. Uh, that process of of you know doing the inventory and 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 all that stuff and making the amends, et cetera, and sharing it. All that stuff is 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 a process that brings me to that place where I have the freedom, where I have that uh, trust and freedom in the power. So no long, I don't long, long I no longer have that pressure. I no longer have to be, you know, perform and makes people believe that I'm something that I'm not. I'm all, I just have to accept it. And it's all that, all that starts from me trusting a power that I don't understand and turning to that power and just saying, you know, I can't do it. You can help me to, to guide me and show me the direction. You know, every morning I do that, that, uh, that, 11 step prayers, God direct my thinking. I ask that my thinking be divorced from self pity, dishonest, or self seeking motives. I ask for inspiration and intuitive thought or decision. What is my next step to be? Free me from self will. What is uh, free me from self will? Thy will not mine be, be done. Just, just turn it over, do that, and say, Guide me, show me what's next, and then follow my, my, uh, my, Fall put one foot for the one foot in front of the other. Follow my instincts. Sometimes after I do say that prayer, I get guidance to call certain individuals or send texts out, or you know, sometimes I just go about my day and and just whatever comes along, be prepared for, be prepared for whatever might come along. But all that is 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 that whole package is freedom, and the freedom is is the power. The freedom is in the power. The freedom is knowing. That I don't have to do, have to, to, I don't have to control anything because like, I can't control anything. What, 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 what do you mean you can't control anything? Well, you know, it's like just the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And courage to change the things you can is a hell of a lot more than things you can't. Courage to change the things I can. All, okay, so God, uh, God, God. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. What right. can I change? What I cannot change is everything outside of myself. No, that's not everything true. outside of myself that that's has not nothing to do with that is not that is not connected to me. I can't change anybody's attitudes. I can't change anybody else outside of myself. You can change I can change, circumstances I can cer cer I can change certain. I can change certain things outside myself that I am in control of, like, I mean, my, like my, my environment, but I can't change people. I can't change places. I can't change certain things. Uh, courage to, you know, know the difference or wisdom to know the difference. Courage to change the things I can. Well, what can I change? What can I change? I can change my attitudes. I can change my outlook. I can trust, I can decide I, to make the, I can, I decide to make, make, you know, to get on my knees and ask for help. I can change that and become the person that, you know, asks for help instead of the person who thinks he knows everything and the person who thinks he can run the show and then can, continues to get frustrated and angry and drunk and everything else that I, I can change that by trusting the power. Because my emotions left on my own devices without the power are going to lead me to getting drunk. And I know that by, because I've seen it happen to many people. When they don't trust the power, when they take over their will, when they take over, you know, that when their ego allows them to, uh, to run their life, that's what happens. So I don't want that to happen to me. So I, I, I continue to put my faith in the power and trust the power. So you know the book "Choose Your Own Adventure." You Choose familiar? your own adventure. Yeah, no, I'm not familiar with it. Popular in like the '90s, it was more of a church, like an elementary school book. But you would oh. like you would get to a certain paragraph and it would say to like essentially to unlock the door, keep reading, or to uh, jump over the fence, turn to page 92. 
Oh, okay. Okay, like that premise. Right. So you would choose your own fate. But it, you would do okay. like a, a, a novel. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, no, but what I'm getting at is I need you to do that. <laughs> right now, I need you to take over the conversation and lead it however you want because I can touch base on what you said or we can – or you can probe me or you can choose another topic. Well, okay, why don't you touch base on what I said? And, and uh, touch base on what I said, because I know I, I think that you've, uh, when I say that there's, um, you know, there's things that are outside of my control, I think that you, you believe that there are a lot more, there are a lot more things in your, in our control than, than what I'm willing to look at. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So why don't you go there? Okay. Are you, that's why I asked you before I <clears throat> opened my big, fat, juicy mouth, I wanted to ask your, uh, <laughs> You don't have to ask my permission. Well, no. Sometimes I do because I'm in a good space today and I feel like having your input before I just open my mouth is sometimes value. Sometimes I, ha I really want to say what I want to say. And in yeah. this case, it's like I don't want to just uh, throw grenades at you for the sake of it. And, yeah, and, well, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, go go well, go where you need to go. Well, that, that's why I was asking you, like, where do we need to go? And and so that was my concept. So, um, you, I met you've mentioned a, a more than one occasion, and I just feel like it's un it's not thought out, and it's like I have no control. You've said that like <clears throat> I'm not going to exaggerate, but like two or three times throughout our podcast, I, I recall yeah. you saying, like, okay. I have no control. Yeah. And I don't see the benefit of saying that. And I don't see the, I don't see how that's beneficial to say that. And like, it's kind of like I, when you say that, I'm not sure why you're saying that. And I don't know like why you would jump back 25 years to go, well, yeah, like, okay. So you have no, if that's something you needed to admit in order to make it to the next meeting, fine. But in today's context, I don't see that as valuable when there's like 90% of the shit you can control. And then you have like 10% external circumstances that are out of your control. And it's like, even the premise of like controlling other people is debatable because of course you can, like there's certain things that, yes, like you can't make up somebody's mind, but you certainly help can help persuade them. And, and like, and taking, taking stock of that and acknowledging that is really important and is also being honest. So it's kind of like, it's really important to like, if, if I were to ask you, like, if I already made up my mind of where we're going to go eat lunch and, but I asked you, where would you like to eat lunch? But we end up at the spot that I want to eat at. I'm controlling the situation. You can have it like, and, and, and like, this is just off the top of my head. I, I haven't thought this out myself, but I, what I'm objecting to is your, premise that things cannot be controlled and, and I totally think that's bullshit and I don't think that's fair for like for me to agree with so I'm not saying it, it's I'm not even necessarily saying you're wrong I'm giving you a perspective that I just think that I don't see the value in you saying I have no control and it's just up in the air and whatever happens happens it's kind of like mm, I don't see the value in that I don't think you're taking responsibility and I, I think it's disingenuous and I think it's dishonest and I think it's it's something that you like it's when I hear that's like you've heard it so you think you need to say it and I don't think it's right and I don't think at any certain like based on all the things that like when you do use the serenity prayer which I think is a super valuable tool that I personally use on a multi multi times throughout the day multiple times throughout the day is the serenity prayer to get that break to get that pause to really think things through and then to control the situation. Okay, what do I have to do here? Well, how do I, how do I problem solve? And how do I, how do I use my best judgment, my tools, my character, make the situation as best as possible under my control. And then, yeah, you got it. Like there are certain elements, like after I do that, I got to let go. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I understand, I understand what you're saying. I think we, we, there might be more common 
commonality here than than what you're what you're what you're seeing. And now what? Because what I'm talking about is, you know, there there are, there are things that I can't control about what other people are doing outside. Very right? little, Dad. Very right? little. Like if, very if, little, right? Like if you're a sales but, person. But, but I, I, but yeah, if you're a salesperson, you you can you can sort of guide the conversation in the direction that you want to go for sure. That's that's right. I mean, no, and, and I, I can. And like, I, I have an idea of like, if I want to go for lunch, do I want to go spicy? Do I want to go to that nice trendy place? Or do I want to save a little money today and go to that little cheap Thai place that I know about? So, yeah. So I, I kind of like, if I have, um, if I have like a sort of an idea ahead of time of where I want to go for lunch, it's probably best for me to say, let's go to the Thai place. I want to save some money today. Let's go to the Thai place. Or let's go, I feel, I really feel like that trendy place is where I want, need to be today. Let's go to that trendy place. Rather than asking somebody else where I want to go and, and, and where we should go when, when I do have a place where I want to go, it's better for me to tell that person where I want to go because that's, you know, otherwise it's kind of, it, it, it sounds manipulative to me, right? But that's not even you my see. point. My point is like, you're driving the car there. You're in control of the vehicle. You have, you have right. to drive there. You are in control of the other people. If someone swerves in front of you, you can break yeah. or swerve yourself. So, so my I point mean, is, so, it's not about the, it, it's the point that you made a statement, a blanket statement that I have no control when I'm objecting to the fact that 90% of my day, 95% of my day, I'm in control. So I just think there's a gigantic difference in someone saying I have no control versus when I'm saying, no, you pretty much have 100% control. So I don't know right. why we're like. So it's not even about manipulating someone in the line. I told you that was off the top of my head, but like for you to get in your car and say, I have no control. It sounds like I don't want to get in the car with you, sir. You sound like right. a, a lunatic. So that's well, what I'm no. saying. Like, so you're not like, <laughs> that's I'm, I'm saying, missing the point of there, how there's that's more, There's more commonality in that. Um, what I'm telling you, what I'm talking about is getting frustrated over other people's behavior or, or getting frustrated over other people's stuff because that is stuff that is out of my control. And if I am frustrated over somebody else's behavior, somebody else's attitude, what somebody else is doing, that's not on them. That's on me because I have my, my ability to accept where they're supposed to be. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, going to a restaurant. I'm talking about stuff outside of my stuff, outside of my stuff that gets me frustrated. They used to get me way more frustrated. And for some sign, I had this, some crazy idea that, I could control how, how other people were behaving. I could control what other people were believing. And, and if I wanted, for example, if I had a belief about uh, a religious, I believe, which I, uh, back in the day, I wouldn't have that. But if I had a belief about lack of religion that I was trying to share with somebody and they, they were religious and I would, I would really want to pound the, pound my idea home to, because I wanted them to, to, agree with me because then if they agree with me, it, 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 it sort of validated my ideas and it would be, uh, you know, I, 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 I somehow got some power, some strength or some perceived power strength in that because my ego was being fed. Hey, this person agrees with me. I'm special. I'm, you know, and, 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 and I would, so I would go out of my way to make people want to, to believe, to agree with me. And I still do that. To a degree, I still want people to agree with me, and when they don't, there's part of me that my ego gets a little bit of pinching, and so. But I have to come to the place where where I don't where I realize that I don't have control over what other people think or believe or, or and that's okay. That's what I'm talking about. That's the level accept of acceptance I'm looking for. Is not, not. Uh, you know, not to, to believe that I'm just going to be a mushroom and lie there and have people crap all over me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, about being frustrated, and angry, and being affected by other people's behavior. And the less I'm affected by other people's behavior and attitudes and all that stuff, the better off I am. So if I love, find that level of acceptance where their behavior and attitude doesn't affect me so much, I'm in a better place. And that's what one of the biggest changes from, uh, you know, recovery. And that all, it all comes back to, again, trusting the power and not believing that it's all about me, that I have to do all this changing because that's a frustrating, pointless exercise that only gets me angry. Okay. But we, we, we trailed off again. I'm only making one point. 
Okay. And my only point is that you gave a blanket statement and I have no control. Those were verbatim. Right, okay. And, yeah, and, and you said it more, and, yeah. and the reason why I brought it up is because you said it more than once. And even if someone had a difference of opinion or different, different point of view or decided to turn right instead of turn left, you still yeah. have full control. So I don't see how that statement is, again, of value or why it needed to be, why you need, why you feel you personally need to say, I have no control. Well, I think I need to, I, I said, I, I think I needed maybe, uh, I can see from your standpoint how I needed maybe more clarification to that. I, I, I think I make that blanket statement with the assumption that people know what I'm talking about. Maybe they don't. And so that you're right. Maybe I needed to clarify that because, you know, yeah, there are certain things I can control and, and, and you know, in my directly in front of me that I can control. But one thing I can't control is other people's attitudes and behavior. And I, and I, and I get frustrated for trying to do that. Or, or other people's, you know, trying to get people to agree with me. You know, so that just that's like a character defect of yours, nothing to do with control or not having control. Well, yeah, it's, it's uh, cause I, I believe, I believe sometimes still that I, I, I can change people's minds or I can it's control crazy. that and, and sway them or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, and maybe I can to a certain degree, but, or make up, maybe I can, you know, say certain things that, that, that can open people's minds up. But, uh, then I realize there's a whole bunch of people that I'm not going to open their minds up or change it and, and, and sway their behavior or their attitudes. And I need to let that go. Yeah. Cause I'm just kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum where I don't, I don't see it. I don't see their, I don't see through, there's not, there's not a point in my day where I need to say I have no control. There's no, there's no, there's not a necessity for me to use that and, and try to see how it would be of value or to use it as a tool to go, wait a minute, I have no control here. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see that. I don't see that being ever like, no, not ever, but I, I just don't see that. Like I said, I can open it up to 10% of external circumstances, not being under my control where I do have to then go into other tactics but I'm not talking about that. So therefore, like well, what, that, that's, okay. that sentence though will never come out of like, I have no control. Even last yeah, week, but, again, okay, you were like, so, I don't right. like the word control. And I was just, so I was just questioning it. Again, like I, last week, you, I, I was, we were talking about boxing and, and golf. And one of the phrases you were, I think I'm again verbatim is, oh, wait a minute. I don't like the word control. And I just thought, and then when you brought it up again this week, I thought, okay, choose your own adventure because I'm going to throw grenades at that because I just don't see how there's like how that that makes things by you saying that it is like I, if I had to defend you as your lawyer I would say well you're just trying to be humble by saying that it sounds like you're being humble but I don't see how that adds value to your life to, to somehow admit that you have no control over your circumstances uh, or your actions or directing other people. And I, I think that if you say that in a general sense over and over again, I just don't see how that benefits you. And that's all, that's what this whole thing is about is just like, so those blanket statements that I hear at meetings, the blanket statements that it's almost like said without thinking it through is why I'm pinpointing this for example and going so hard at it. Cause for me, it's like, no, I have control, man. If I don't have control, I have a big fucking problem. And I like the word control because it's like, I'm, I'm responsible, I'm accountable, and I'm in control of the situation. And if it goes off at the rails, it's my fucking fault. Okay, for, okay I can give you an example of something that you may, you may, you may get frustrated over. May, you may run into that situation. So say you're, on, on, you're, 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 you're watching something on TV or you're watching something unfold in front of you on the streets in Bangkok or, or you're watching, uh, or you're, you happen to be on social media and something happens that you are, that just like, you go, Oh my God, that's, I hate that. That's, that's, that's bothers me. And, and you realize that there's nothing you can, you can do about, about uh, to change it. Right. Because it's just, it's a happening thing. It's something that just happens. 
and and there's some people who have that behavior and there's nothing you can do about it uh you can do like for example if i'm on social media and there's some, somebody sends me something that i find really like it's just i hate it i don't want anything to do with it i don't want to so I, I'll either kill it or, or, or I can, if it's Facebook or something like that, I can, I can um, block them, you know, uh, delete them as friends or whatever. And, and, then, and that's what I can do. But that's all I can do. I'm not going to, uh, you know, change that person's attitude or, 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 or go on a, uh, a rant about something. Because that, that, that type of thing will, will, will only frustrate me. I know that from, from personal experience that, that when I carry signs and try to, you know, change people's minds and attitudes with, with stuff like that, it, it's just not, it's not, <coughs> it's not beneficial for me. It gets me into a place where I become angry with everybody and frustrated with life. And I know that there's a lot of good stuff going on. So I can change my focus and look there. And if I, if I, if I, if I just use that serenity prayer to believe and understand that some people exactly the way they're supposed to be because of what, you know, whatever, you know, that, that person like myself is sick too. What is it about me that is sick that I need to change in me? That's all I can do. I can't change things that are, that are outside of myself and I don't want to go there. It's not going to help me to go there because some things I just have to accept because I can't change them. So that's what I'm talking about. Those are, you know, things like that where, 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 you know, you know, you're not going to change anything. You know, you can't change that specific thing, but what you can do is you can make a decision to be better than that. Or, or if you, if you want to choose that judgment, like to, to be, you know, to spread something different, right? You know, if somebody's, if somebody's, you know, for example, spreading a hate message, I can spread a, spread a love message, right? That's what I can do. And so, you know, that's, that's where, that's where my limitations are. I can't change what other people think and believe and do, but I can start, but I can, you know, I can change myself, my attitudes and what I do. I can change my behavior and I can, I can maybe make a, a, a positive change that way. Right. When I see somebody else doing something that I, that I cannot control. Yeah. I don't feel like I have a lack of power. I don't feel like I have a lack of control. That's not so, it's just kind of what I, it, it's funny. I just find it like, so to, to back up your point would be step one. I have no control over my drinking. I'm powerless, right? So that's where the mm -hmm. word, that's where the, that's where the, the concept and the logic and the mentality comes from. And then it goes mm -hmm. to say, and my life is unmanageable and that my life is unmanageable. So mm -hmm. you're, it doesn't say you have no control over your life. It says you have no control over your drinking. You're powerless over your drinking. And your life is unmanageable. Unmanageable and no control are certainly different. They're very different. It's indicating that you can have a manageable life and that you can control your, well, you can control your life if you're not drinking, essentially. Okay, but if I, if I see, the, one, of the, one of the problems that I have is that like, if I have this belief that I can control things, then, then I, then like, you know, okay, so I, I, I trust the power and I, I go to the power to stay sober. I do. I ask my, I, every day I ask for sobriety to be sober this day. I ask for help to be sober this day. Every day I ask for that help. You know, and I've been sober a long time, like almost 27 years. So it, it's, 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 it's working for me. Uh, if I start believing that I have certain control over, you know, if I have any control, if I believe that I got control over whether I drink or not, I'm in trouble. I believe I'm in trouble because then I stop turning to the power and start believing it's me. And, and that's why, that's why it's important for me to, to do that. You know? Okay. But just to, just to be really clear, I, I'm deaf. What I, I, 
I had to rephrase my words to be to make my point clear. Um, if I refrain from drinking, my life is manageable. That's what step one. If, that's the opposite of step one. If I refrain from drinking, yes, your life your life is what manageable. That's all you got to do to stop drinking. Your life is manageable. No, like that's the end result. Well, that's part of it. No, but like that's what I, I'm saying. Know. Like that's what that, like if you abstain from drinking, even if what the reading states today, right? Like then you right. have a chance, then you have a fighting chance, right? Okay. But how? Yeah, sure. But how do I do that? How do I refrain? I refrain from drinking? Like I mean, just just stop. I mean, I can't. That's not. That's the whole thing. Okay, but you're missing my. Okay, so I, I'm just summing it up. If you stop drinking and you and you work the program, yeah. Okay. And your life in theory is manageable, correct? Yeah, you may have to do a little bit more than that, some of us, but that's okay. How, what's more than working the program? Well, more, more working the program. Some of us need also help to deal with, uh, you know, severe Okay, but depression, you're taking it you know, in a different direction. I'm, I'm, still, okay. I'm still hitting home on the, the word control. And then, how, how, again, how you just said, I have no control. Okay. <laughs> so... All I'm saying is that I don't feel like I need to say the words, I have no control. And the reason why is because when I, I go throughout the day, whether I pray or not in the morning, I have control over my day and what I'm doing and my actions and the direction I'm going to take my thought patterns. And my, if my thought patterns go in this way, then my emotions typically follow suit. And then I have a manageable existence. I'm able to manage what's, what's in front of me, what's coming down the pipe, and I can make executive decisions, and I can problem solve, and I am in control. Okay, agreed. Yeah, I agree with that, all that. Okay, and so like, back to what you were saying then a little further, I read something on social media that I disagree with, I'm not, I not approve of, I'm, that just because that happened doesn't mean my control has lessened. As you said, I can block them, I can go to a different website, I can, like, again, I'm a realist in the sense I'm not saying you I I can create a time machine and go back and change something that's not what I'm debating I'm just I just don't see how saying I have a lack of control solves any issue at all and why it would be need, necessary for me to say that's the that's my whole point of this it's not, I, well yeah okay yeah that's it like the yeah. like, so I just don't see like why you would bring it up more than one occasion and well, how, because 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 if I don't if I if if I believe that I got some kind of create control over other people, like see the problem is, is is I get you know you know those situations which used to baffle me it, are are the situations that like I I have a hard time handling other people's behavior. I get angry when 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 I see somebody who's being selfish or self centered, and it, it it actually to the point where it it, it would ruin my day. And, and ruin and, and the thing is, I have to get to a place of acceptance in that. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and where whereas you, the you know, I have I have a way around that. Like, you know, I, I for example, I, I can I can tell you about my work, my job. Okay, so back in the day when I was, you know, before recovery, I was frustrated and angry, and I get uh, very few people that I get got along with, and I I would you know, continually point out their, their character defects and gossip and all that other stuff. And just, it was just an, it was an intolerable situation. And, and I believed that they didn't like me and, 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 uh, but I believed it was all their fault. And then what happened is, is then I, I, I get in recovery, it start to change. And all of a sudden it just seems that the, the attitudes of these people change. And all of a sudden I'm getting along with them and, and realizing, and then, and then, you know, when I make a mistake, you know, promptly admit it and how that changes the dynamics of the relationship with people, all that stuff you see. Now I have that certain, certain, certain amount of control because I've changed myself. And by changing myself, I've changed my relationship with other people. But prior to that, I didn't have control how, what they thought of me, but I wanted to, I wanted them to like me. I wanted everybody to like me, but they wouldn't. And and it was to be honest with you, I was probably pretty unlikable. 
so, and, but, and I would get extremely frustrated by that and angry. And I was frustrated and angry all the time. And what had happened to me is I frustrated and angry. I drank and then blamed it all on them and just tried to forget about it. Stuff, 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 all my feelings about everybody and stuff, all that stuff. And then, but then I get in recovery and I don't, I no longer have those situations because, you know, <laughs> sure, sure. Things pop up. I would get frustrated and angry for, for, for moments and, and then see if I, if I, if I, if I created an issue, then I can take a responsibility for that. And it just, it just made for a, a you know, it really is a, a completely different environment and a, and a much more healthier environment. So that's, those are things that I had control over. Right. And, and, and but it all had to do with me and my attitude. So when it started to change my, my attitudes, my behavior, it did have an effect of, of the stuff around me. So that, that was in, in a sense controllable, but I just didn't understand it because prior to that, I didn't understand the benefits of being honest, of being responsible, of taking responsibility of, you know, making amends and all that. Other stuff. I just never did it. I just continued to blame and I continued to be frustrated and angry. And so that's that's what I'm what I'm talking about is that I was frustrated and angry over a whole bunch of things that I had no control over. But I, it turns out that when I did change, I did have some control over that. I just didn't know that. Okay, which is just, just a couple of things. That's just a lot different than saying I have no control, like a kind of like a sentence you just toss out there. Right. And it's also like if I had to use the word, I have no control, I have no, no control in making a girl like me that doesn't like me. Right. Right. So I, I can mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. But like <clears throat> what I've learned is like, again, those are, these are going to be outlining situations. If you say like, if I generalize it <laughs> and say like, how do I make people like me? Well, be yourself and be a good person, help people out and they'll like you. Like it's pretty, it, and then you'll get outliners that are just, that don't like you. But I, again, I, so it's just kind of like <clears throat> the, the way, the way I can really see it is if you, if you like a girl, you try all these things, you're a good guy, you buy roses, uh, you're funny, you're semi attractive and she just is not into you. You can't control that. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but you gave it, you get, you gave it your all. So in that situation, if you said, I have no control whether this girl likes me or not. Then I'd be like, okay, I'm not even going to debate that. I don't think, I think that sentence is accurate. But what I, what I was saying about which I opened this can of worms was just because you, again, you multiply, multiple, you've said it multiple times. I have no control. And then the last week was, I don't like the word control. And I just didn't see the benefit of why you would say that. I, I, again, if you said, Hey, I really like this girl son i buy her flowers i'm charming i'm handsome i'm funny but she doesn't like me i have no no control over that you wouldn't have heard a peep out of me out of me but instead you say things like i have no control and i don't like the word control and i just so that's 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 just my point that's like my final thought on it i don't need to beat a dead horse i was just so i was just questioning some of your things that are like and and i like to do that because it makes me think I like to hear your counter argument or counter arguments. And then I like to like, just, you know, rethink if I'm holding my position with accuracy or if I'm off, off, if I'm wrong or if I believe in what I'm saying. And so again, I just don't think it's an art. It's a piece of artillery artillery. What's the word? Art or, artillery, artillery. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but I need your to, arsenal. Your arsenal, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad. Like I wouldn't pull that out for me to benefit me in my day to day life. And I see, and that's why I was trying to again be your lawyer in the sense that you would use that logic about drinking. I have no control. Got it. Got it. But like in in a, a, after that's been resolved or that's in remission or you have recovered. Well, then you're dealing with your manageable, unmanageable life, but that's nothing to do with control or lack of control. That's about, that's, 
so again, I just don't see it being part of like your artillery. So that's why I asked you, why do you say that? As, as this blanket statement, unless, and, and you, you, you graciously admitted like, well, maybe I could have like refined it or expanded on it. Yeah. But I just found like, okay, I just don't know why you say things like that. Like, I don't know why that's a, like at the end of the day, really, why would that be necessary to say? Yeah. Well, I, I guess, yeah. And, and I, 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 maybe I could be more specific because I find that, you know, because it's people that getting are, are getting frustrated over, you know, it, it, it people who, who, who get frustrated over situations and they get so angry and so worked up and, it, and it's like, what are you doing, man? You got no control over that. It, right. It's like, you know, and, and, and I guess that's what my, my point was, but without being specific and just throwing a blanket over. Yeah. There are things that we have, we have to control. There are things that we have to take care of. And I guess I, I maybe I don't like the word control. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there are, there, there are certain things we have to, that we have to uh, take care of. And they're, they're, you know, but it's it's just kind of like okay, decisions so, we have to make, etc. You you said to the guy like, hey man, you're getting so frustrated, you're getting so upset uh, over something you can't control. Then right. my, my solution would be, but you can control this A, B, and C. So right, can, you know, do you see? So I don't see how. Yeah. Can, that's it. Yeah. That's right. So to say like I have no control over anything just sounds so absurd to me. Yeah. Right. 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 There's a whole lot of things I I I, I can't control, but like many many more things that I certainly can't. I'm the opposite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Control away. Do you know, like, you know, when it's put, like, when there's really heavy, um, can you control the weather? Of course not. See, I disagree. <laughs> you can control how you react to the weather. For no, sure. I mean, I can, no, no, you know what they do now? Like when it's really, there's major dry spells, they're shooting shit out in the, into the clouds to create right. cloud, cloud, cloud seeding. Yeah. Yeah. To create pers uh, precipitation. And, and so it's, I think it's also like, I think it's perspective, right? And it's like, okay, what can I do about this honestly? What can I honestly do about the situation and how can I manage it? And how can right. I, and, and by doing, like by thinking that with that kind of logic, you're in control. And so it's like, okay, I can't stop it from raining, but how, what, how do I manage the situation? That, that's yeah. not a lack of control. That's almost like full control. Because you're you're dealing with the situation as is, for sure. And that, and that again, if you if you if you listen to the serenity prayer, that's exactly what it's talking about, right? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, which is a lot of stuff outside of myself. And you if see, a, yeah. You if see there's both. a if there's a meteorite heading towards Earth and it's going to obliterate the Earth like an Armageddon or whatever. Uh, what can I do about it? I can run around and scream and yell and blame and God and everything else, or I can just say, "Well, here's an ar there's a there's a there's a, uh, uh, a meteorite heading towards the Earth that's going to obliterate us. I'm I'm going to have a going to have to spend the next uh, 27 hours that I have making the most most of it, being the best I can, and maybe you know having as much enjoyment as I can." <laughs> If I could do that, that'd be great. It'd be much better than, 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 than running around and slapping people. Where, where would you, if the meteorite was coming, what, what would be, what would be your last, what would be the last restaurant you go to? Okay. Let's see. Uh, the last restaurant. Hmm. Not even necessarily last meal, like the last restaurant that you're going to go eat at. Uh, so I have to be pretty good. Uh, hmm. uh, I don't know. I might go for the. Uh, might might go for the. Uh, I might just go to. Uh, maybe I'll just go to the keg. 
or no, uh, yeah, it's called Steakhouse. So, um, which Steakhouse, Tom? Yeah. Uh, um, there's a the good one that we that uh, Chase and Maddie took us to uh, Barbarians. I like that. Where's that? Barbarians. That's uh, just off Young Street. This episode was brought to you by Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, there you go. How about you? What about me? What, where would you go for your last meal? Wherever Elon Musk is eating, because he, he has, probably has a plan to get off the planet. Ah, <laughs> that's thinking. Because I still believe I have control, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. A lot of people will be hunting Eli Musk down. How are we getting out of here? Yeah. No, if I had to eat, I think Taco Bell. Taco Bell? <laughs> I, would, I would get combo number two with the Dr. Pepper. Beautiful. <laughs> that's great yeah. and then like, I, always, I remember thinking about that like if you were getting the electric chair like if you got your you know how you get to request your last meal before you're put to death yeah I just get like a bunch of Taco Bell so when they electrocute me I just shit my pants and shit all over the, <laughs> the floor so I'd make an epic mess of Taco Bell <laughs> so I'd be like there take that <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, hey, you, you were, remember last week we were talking about uh, uh, anecdotes. Yeah. And I, I, I was thinking about one, and I, I was, it was, it was something that I was uh, thinking about, and 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 uh, sort of popped into my head. I yeah, just sure. remember when when I left. Okay, so when I left the treatment center, I don't even know if you even remember his name was John. He was actually part time counselor at the treatment center. And it, well, I was told to get a sponsor, right? So I asked John to sponsor me because I, I, I saw him as kind of like a tough dude that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't uh, take crap from. Right. And so anyway, uh, he, was, uh, he was a nice guy and, and a good guy and, and really available for me. And I remember when I was, um, uh, I went back to work and I was leaving work and I, it was, it was like a nighttime and I, I phoned him up and I talked to him and I said, okay, so I've got to leave work here in, in, in a couple hours. And, uh, I'm uh, a little concerned because I haven't been able to drive home straight home <clears throat> from work for, uh, a long, long time and without stopping the bar. <clears throat> so he, uh, he happened to be available and he said to me, uh, why don't you stop here on your way home from work? And you know, this is a midnight, right? So, um, and you guys were actually, you guys were away. Uh, your mom took you where you guys were on a vacation out West. And when I went back to work and so, uh, I did, I stopped at his place on the way home and we, you know, shared for, for an hour or two. And then, I, and I felt great and I went home and it was good. And I did that probably two or three times in the, over the time, maybe, well, actually probably four or five times over the time you guys were away. And, uh, um, it was really helpful for me that he was able to, you know, be there for me and, and, and help me through that. And, uh, and he ended up, uh, ended up, uh, dying probably 15, 10, 15 years ago from an overdose. And, uh, it made me re remember that, uh, you know, he was my first sponsor. He ended up moving away after probably about a month or so. Uh, I think he had some issues with his ex-wife or whatever. I can't remember. But he ended up moving away uh, to Peterborough. And then uh, something led to another thing. And he ended up pulling away from the program anyway. And and uh, so he got back into into drugs again. And he, was, uh, and he ended up dying of an overdose. And then I remember thinking, you know, he helped me so much, so greatly in, in that short period of time that he, you know, that he was uh, there for me, right? And uh, I don't know, like, I mean, 
you, you get guys like that who are like you remember you talked to Dave we talked about disappearing Dave how he, he helped you in such a great way early in your sobriety and it was the same way with John and like I don't even know I I, I, I can't even tell you if I had to be if I would have made it without his help right I don't know because I was so afraid you know leaving work and and, and being able to drive by that bar but having that destination he's expecting me to come to his place and all that other stuff, it, it would just, it changed, you know, it, it, uh, it was really helpful for me. And I don't know if I would have made it without him or not, but, you know, maybe not. And uh, so that's what uh, I sort of the anecdote was, uh, and that was. What was like the he, last thing? He, he has no, probably, probably has no idea how much he, help me and how important that was for me right yeah so what, what, sorry what were you saying no just what was his last initial just to mention it. oh eight eight <laughs> yeah 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 no, you've mentioned, I've heard you share about that before. And um, like, as much as I like being a contrarian and, and just going against the grain and stuff, like put things in perspective, my final thought would just be the simple thing. Like I met a lot of great people throughout my existence on the planet. And I'd say like mm -hmm. but the, the, the top people that I hold closest to me, like, nine out of ten of them are are in the program mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like yeah after after as much bitching or moaning or, or questioning that i do i, I giving an unbot like a, a real inventory of like what like a real an honest inventory of like even just the people i've met like like i said like the top 10 there's top, the top 10 greatest people i've ever met happen to be in the program yeah yeah me too for sure yeah all right ready to wrap it yep okay serenity we prayer god oh. grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change courage to change the things we can and wisdom to know the difference <laughs>